Hi there, it's Elaine Fraze, Farm Family Coach, coming to you from my farm in southwestern Manitoba with a gorgeous bouquet. And I appreciate flowers so much because I love to grow them in my garden. And this was a celebratory bouquet. Unfortunately, this week's insight is around lessons from a farm divorce. Divorce is something that many farm families fear. They don't want to talk about it but it's something that we have to face. And many of you as longtime listeners and viewers will understand that I'm not one to shy away from talking about the bull in the middle of the room that everybody's avoiding. So what I'd like you to consider is that if you want to fight for your marriage, think about going for counseling. And I've just discovered an amazing site called onlyyouforever.com where there's clinical psychologists and therapists that will work with you and your partner on marriage counseling. Counseling is about recovery. Coaching is about discovery. So the work my team and I do is to help have hard conversations so that you don't end up in the divorce courts, but maybe you end up bringing reconciliation and flowers instead. So I'd like you to think about what is it that you truly need to improve your marriage? Pay attention to it. The average age of divorce in Canada, according to some statistics just published in Country Guide, is 46 years old. The age of the length of the marriage was 32 years. So we are seeing gray divorces, as called in Canada. And for farm families, it's devastating. It's devastating for any family, but it's particularly tricky when you live at your workplace, which is what a farm is. So I'd like to encourage you to look at getting legal advice very early on, getting financial planning advice. And I've written about Sarah McCullough before at wddevelopment.ca, who is a divorce fee for service only uh, financial planner. And she's so good that farmers continue working with her after the divorce, even as a couple being divorced. I also want you to think about how you're going to solidify your emotional support group. Who do you have that can walk alongside with you, hold up the mirror, give you feedback? I'd also like you to think about self-care. And for me, sometimes when people don't give me flowers, I go out and buy my own. And self-care for me is also having times of blocked rest, taking Sunday as a Sabbath, and spending time with family and developing rich relationships. For me, it may also be picking up the phone. What is self-care for you? Mental health is on our radar very much these days in farming and agriculture and all across the country. And we're still trying to navigate the effects of what I call the great pause. So be transparent with what you need. Also be transparent with your accountant and what you're trying to solve in terms of a separation agreement. And in divorce on farms, it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna get a divorce. A friend of mine had a redemptive separation where she said, I'm coming back, but I'm not coming back until you see um, a counselor, till you get sober, until you start attending AA. The, the redemptive separation lasted for three years and then she was able to uh, regain a marriage relationship, which she had fought long and hard for. And she was also concerned about the succession of transition of her farm to the next generation. So I hope I've given you some insights and some tips to think about what you want to do in terms of learning from divorce. I also want you to think about what you can read and what resources are available. And I'd like to offer up my book, Farming's In-Law Factor, which is very helpful to think about your roles and a lot of the in-law issues can unfortunately transform into very severe divorce issues because not everyone at the farm table has a voice. Lessons from divorce for the farm. There's lots more to talk about. So go over to my blog, read up and reach out. I wish you all the best and I wish you all to be rich in relationship.